Sup nerds, how's it going? Sorry, that was weird. I had a weird dream. I was working on other things, other channels, other content, other series, a podcast. What a weird fever dream that was. Anyway, how are you doing? I've got some stuff to catch you up on. So first of all, on my Blender Holt channel, which is my new side channel for doing Blender only things like workshop type content, I've started a new series called the Blender Refresher series. This won't be the only thing that's happening on here, but the intention behind these videos is just to reintroduce you to different editor areas of Blender if you've been away from it for a while or if you're new to Blender. But I'd say it does have a minimum requirement of understanding how the Blender interface works and how to modify it. And if you're unaware of the channel, it is a relatively new project. So if you want, you can take a look and sign up. So the two refresher videos so far are about the 3D view and the text editor. Also, surprise, a new channel. Yes, I've been making loads recently called Reference Board. This one is for, you know, all of the hunting for inspiration videos we did on this main channel a little while ago. Bit of an experimental type thing. Looking through video games, hunting for references and then doing reference breakdowns. Well, that's here now. So there's four videos on there so far, which I haven't announced to anyone yet. So this is the first time, although I might have mentioned it on the second channel. So, so far we've got four videos. One of them is about looking at real life references from London and Google Maps and it's also giving you tips for like storytelling through the environment so I talk about how the different layers of cities tell stories through time and how if you consider how movement and needs change in a city space through the ages it will give you an indication of how like ancient structures inform modern day layouts and stuff like that so it's quite an interesting one then we've got some storytelling chat from Marvel Spider-Man 2 we've got taking away some interesting art ideas from Assassin's Creed Odyssey and we've got all sorts of like cool ideas for well, spiritualism and symbology and taking ideas for cool 3d test scenes from assassin's creed origins so that's four videos you can watch there if you're interested so on the curtis Hill online channel again another one of the new ones which is specifically going to be about products there's a new help request video so this one is actually a request from someone from blender market asking about studio type lighting like soft lighting for these gundam models so we have a little discussion and i talk about the afterglow product about just like really basic soft lighting which i feel like is quite a nice little demonstration because again these afterglow tools are quite complex so talk Talking about their power in simple scenes is I think quite a nice way for people that are new to Blender to connect with it. So if you want to learn a bit more about that, that's there as well. Additionally, the Parasocial Therapy podcast project has started. So this one was where I was going to take people from all different backgrounds, send them interviews, like interview questions, and then they would respond by text and I would read it out. Gives people enough time to answer. This is what I wanted to do with the creators of Superhive or Blender Market. I've sent them questions. I don't know if they will ever send answers back, but we'll have to wait and see. It's only just started. I've got like a collection of people that are still answering things, but Charon is always my test bench for new projects. So he's always number one. You know, Charon, one of my friends. I mentioned that he's effectively my apprentice in a previous video, so I thought I would test the system on him to start with. So that's why he's always number one when it comes to these kinds of projects. But there's a bunch of people answering them at the moment. We'll see. You can also listen to it on Spotify as well. You just need to check the description and pin comments. I also want to let you know that the Hex Scatter Textures Replace a Helper Add-on, which is not made by us, but it's made by members of this community. Well, they've updated the Helper Add-on recently, so it has more user interface and usability features. If you don't know what Hex Scatter is, it's a project by Azra and myself. You may also know Azra as Chris, but it's our powerful solution for getting infinite semi-procedural materials from non-seamless texture sources using some complex height blending methods. So if you are using the helper add-on, just to let you know, there's an update for it as well. As for this channel, you may have seen these videos go by, but I'll just list them off because you might have missed some of them. We did a video a little while ago, Stop Asking If Blender Is An Industry Standard. That was quite an interesting one. In that video, I discuss how when people talk about why Blender won't be an industry standard, it's so often a extraordinarily thin sliced, limited, westernized visual effects perspective, which is not what Blender is only for. So we have a little chat about that and I have some examples in the video about different places where it's used. We also did a video about visualizing data with path tracing in Blender. So this is related to some of my personal medical studies. You may find it interesting because it kind of proposes an interesting way to see data with, by combining light. There are some technicalities about it, but it was quite a fun one to experiment with anyway. We then did a retrospective on my earlier video talking about the Blender market platform and the concerns I had about that. It's now been renamed to Superhive, by the way. So we talked about some of the ways it could be improved and I shared a little bit of theory for kind of planning businesses over time. It was interesting to discover that in the first video about Blender Market, a lot of people didn't know that it was a separate entity from the Blender Foundation. From what I gathered as well, it's because a lot of people just kind of possibly rightly assume that Blender would make its own paid market to help support the funding of the software. But obviously Blender has its own set of philosophies and it doesn't really know how to fit a paid market into that philosophical structure yet. Following on from that, I did a video 
here on this channel, improving my Blender startup file. This is something that quite a few of you actually use and enjoy. So I'd like to stick to that again in the future. So we made some improvements to the compositing and shading in general, I believe, and some cleanups that's available on Gumroad if you would like a cool starting point for your Blender scenes. It does have a price tag to it, and it's quite a high price tag for a startup file. And the reason for that is because I visualize that as helping to support my medical investigations and my upcoming biomed science degree. Following on from that, we updated modular workspaces our interface add-on for Blender. It's up to version 1.9 now for Blender 4.4 plus. This one has quite a few good improvements, especially for like per workspace improvements where you can have different asset browser settings depending on a workspace. So when you split your interface to quick open an asset browser, it will automatically load onto your favorite libraries for each workspace. But there are more features than that. After that, Blender 4.4 was released and we did a new features breakdown as we usually do. So if you want to get familiar with the new features, then that's worth a watch. I then let you know that I was going to be going to university later on in the year and I don't think it should affect my Blender output. But I've also been doing a lot of pre-learning as well. I'm in the middle of a virology and epidemiology course. And at the moment, we're answering questions about antibody generation in different demographics using ELISAs, so enzyme-linked immunosorbent assays. I love all the terms. Then I wanted to experiment with a different type of video, a bit like our community roundups, but this time taking a look at projects on the Blender Artist website, which I would like to do again, because otherwise I don't usually take a look at the website, so I figure why not record it when I do? It helps to give people some exposure and it's nice to just kind of feel a bit of inspiration when looking at what other people are doing in the Blender space. And then most recently on this channel at the time of recording, I got to Biological with Blender, where we took a look at an old experimental file where I was playing with microbial visualizations, and the files for this are available on Gumroad as well. So to recap so far, there's a whole bunch of new stuff for you to check out. Again, Blender Halt, we've got two refresher videos, a new channel reference board, there's four videos on there for you to have a look at. That'll give you some inspiration and teach you about storytelling as well. We've got a bit of an Afterglow help video on the Curtis Holt Online channel. We've started a podcast, Parasocial Therapy. Then we've got the miscellaneous videos on here. Additionally, there are new videos on the second channel, refurbishing my microscope. That was an interesting one. It got me in contact with a neurology lecturer, which is interesting. I spoke about the decision to pursue a degree. We then had a chat about avoiding decision paralysis. I then talked about road mapping my long-term projects, then followed that up with some things I'd been working on, which I'm sharing with you now, then answered a community question about whether it's a good idea to do duplicate content on YouTube. And then finally, a really important video of this one, fixing my greatest problem. I've been doing an investigation into, I think, what is maybe the last piece of my creative psychology I need to fix, which is my inability to go back to old projects. I think we found a solution. I talk about it in that video. It takes a little while to build it. But basically, the main complaint I've had from you over time, and the main complaint I have about myself, is that I take too long to update things that even though I have ideas for and I know what I want to do for like product updates, there's a cognitive block preventing it from happening a lot of the time. And I figured out what it is. It's an agency issue. But if you feel like that's something you also kind of struggle with, maybe for you, it's being unable to finish old art projects might be worth checking that one out. It's just a side discussion if you're interested. But if you're only interested in my output, don't worry, stick around. So yes. More stuff coming soon. If you made it this far through the video, put a package emoji in the comments. If you're on Windows, press the Windows key and the period key to bring up the secret emoji keyboard. And if you put the package emoji in the comments, I will be able to see which of you beautiful people made it this far. This video will be shared with my patrons as an update. So on that note, if you want to help support me and every project I do and my education and my medication, then you can sign up at patreon.com slash Curtis Holt. Otherwise, you know where everything else is. So thank you for watching, everyone. I hope you're doing well and staying safe, and I will see you next time.